Heller is a French kit model company, and although it has gone through many iterations, the brand is still with us. It was founded in Paris in 1957 by Leo Heller Jahil, who wanted to make kit models, but his first issue was to decide what to make. It is no surprise that a kit company would want to make a kit that would resonate with the local culture. And in the case of France, the perfect aircraft was the newly developed and very popular Sud Aviation Caravelle. A scale of 1 to 100 was settled on and eventually made, but as is often the case with upstart model companies, it took a year to get the molds cut and the kits produced, so they did not get to market until 1958. Later that year, Heller produced three more kits, a Fuga Magister, a Valtour Bomber, and the Experimental Trident Jet. Sales were encouraging enough that they proceeded with four more kits that were released in 1959, an Entendard Jet, two missiles, and a Coleptere. Things went well for Heller, enough so that they developed 86 new kit models in the 1960s, adding ships, helicopters, cars, and of course, more aircraft, many of French origin. They even added an M24 tank. In 1962, they started the Cadet series aimed at younger or entry-level builders. Initially, these used the 1 to 100 scale, but that was expanded later. In 1963, Heller built a production facility in Trun Orne in Normandy. Possibly because they were busy getting the new factory working, Heller did not jump on the slot car craze, which probably saved them some grief given that the hobby peaked very quickly. However, they did make model cars that, with some modifications, could be mounted on slot car chassis. As the 1970s rolled in, the company kept introducing new kits at an accelerated rate and made over 200 new kits in the 1970s, including more cars, aircraft, ships, and a 25mm anti-aircraft gun. In the 1970s, merger mania was starting to sweep around the business world. And in 1972, Heller joined in a partnership with three other hobby and toy companies. A die-cast toy car maker named Solido, an HO scale train maker named Joef, and a toy maker named Delacaste. Together they formed Les Jouets Francais, translated into English, the French toy. Everything from inflation to terrorism seemed to plague the 1970s. This was not helped by steadily increasing competition from companies like Airfix, Revelle of Germany, and Matchbox. Le Jouet Francois was learning what Mattel had just learned a few years before with the acquisition of monogram models. The toy business is not the hobby business. But as we noted, this did not slow down the expansion rate of Heller's catalog. Heller was all over the place with their scales and had some odd ones such as 1 to 40 and 1 to 43 but they made over 100 kits in 1 to 72. Over the years, they would release kits in, but not limited to 1 to 8 scale, 1 to 50, 1 to 35, and ships in 1 to 1200, 1 to 400, and 1 to 200. There was also a single model airplane made in 1 to 200, a Breguet BR-1150 Atlantique Maritime Patrol Plane, which scales perfectly with their 1 to 200 ships. There was also a substantial line of 1 to 24 scale kits, which included 49 cars, 5 motorcycles, 5 trucks and trailers, 6 utility vehicles, and 4 World War II fighter aircraft, probably as a response to the 124 scale model aircraft coming out of Airfix. Notably, there was also a single 1 to 16 scale model of a Citroen automobile. Oddly enough, they made only 11 molds in the popular 1 to 48 scale. Heller seemed to be marching to the beat of their own drummer, as opposed to competing directly with everyone else with more of the same. But try as they may, Le Jouet Francois went into liquidation in 1980. By May of 1981, it was in court-directed administration and eventually broken up. A quick side note, the model train maker, Joef, was reacquired by Compagnie Générale des Jouets, who had just acquired Ravel models of Venice, California two years earlier. Compagnie Générale des Jouets was finding the kit model industry was not meeting their expectations, which may be why they apparently did not try to acquire Heller. Heller was instead acquired by Hobby Products Group of Borden. 
The Hobby Products Group already owned the British model paint company Humbrel. It seemed logical that they could make the two related items, models and model paints. In 1986, Hobby Products Group also acquired Airfix of England. The Hobby Products Group had tried to buy Airfix in 1981, but was beaten out by a subsidiary of General Mills. But General Mills eventually became disenchanted with the kit model business and sold Airfix to the Hobby Products Group in 1986. By this time, General Mills had already moved Airfix's kit model manufacturing from England to Calais, France, so moving the entire operation south to Heller's underutilized facility in Tron, Normandy was easily carried out. This allowed both Heller and Airfix the economy of sharing one facility, but along with that come certain risks, which we'll get into shortly. Most of you World War II history buffs have likely already spotted the historical significance of these two locations. Calais is where the Axis powers expected the Allied invasion of Europe to occur. Normandy is where it actually did. Heller, unlike Airfix, had always mainly just made models. Airfix, by comparison, had previously made everything from fishing poles to pocket combs, but by now, kit models were pretty much all they were making. As a result, Heller started making Airfix's kits for them, and then shipping the raw kits to Britain for boxing, decals, instructions, shipment, etc. This lasted for about eight years, but despite these efficiencies, Heller still ended up in financial trouble, and it got ugly. The Heller kits were popular with many builders for being affordable and making items not available by other manufacturers, but some builders considered Heller's offerings fairly basic. I myself have always been quite happy with them, but that's me. Heller now faced the three-pronged attack of a worldwide decline in kit model sales, stiff competition from Japan, America, and now China, amongst others, and rising production costs. As Heller slowly failed, it dragged down its parent company, Humbrel, and it almost buried Airfix as well. Heller was not only making Airfix's kits for them, but it was also selling Airfix kits in France under the Heller name in a co-boxing agreement. The danger of this was obvious to all. If the Heller factory closed, then Airfix would not have kits either. Here is where the story gets confusing, but I will try to make it short and understandable. This is based on numerous sources, so I hope I pieced it together correctly. In 1994, Borden sells the Hobby Products Group with its heavily indebted Humbrel, Airfix, and Heller to an Irish investment company, Alan McGuire & Partners in a deal that is underwritten by the Bank of Scotland, not the Royal Bank of Scotland, the Bank of Scotland. In 1999, Heller, now rebranded as Heller SA, partners with Ethereon Group to help it buy out other toy companies, because that always works out well. At this point in my presentation, I absolutely must stop to give a shout out to Andrew for his help in rewriting the following segment for me. Thank you, Andrew. By 2003, Hobby Products Group could not service its debt to the Bank of Scotland. The bank put in a team of management consultants who sold off non-core parts of the business. This included Heller SA, which was sold for a nominal sum in 2005. Humbrel's managing director left Humbrel to head up the independent Heller. It did not go well, so later in 2005, the bank found some experienced managers for Humbrel. They were a good team, but Humbrel remained weak, and events were soon to conspire against them. When Heller SA failed, Humbrel was unable to negotiate a viable restart, and Heller's administrators refused Humbrel access to the Airfix molds. This led the Bank of Scotland to finally admit defeat and bring in the administrators in August of 2006. Now here's the unexpected part. I do not know how the original deal with Hobby Products Group was structured, but the UK administrators report stated that the Hobby Products Group still owned the Heller brand and the Heller molds when Heller SA folded. This gave the Hobby Products Group a bargaining chip over Heller. Frank Martin of Hornby who was once Humbrel's managing director, negotiated a deal with Heller's management and administrators to give Heller its molds and brand name in return for allowing Hornby to remove the Airfix molds from the factory in Trun. 
This allowed the French administrator to obtain clear title to Heller's name and molds, which it could then sell to try and settle the bankruptcy. Isn't the model business fun? During all of this, Heller kept cranking out kits and even released a new Airbus 380. In 2007, Heller SA was transferred to La Société Manot, which stands for Manufacture des Objets Précieux. And I apologize to the French-speaking world for the way I probably just butchered that. It was put under the direction of Benjamin Lenneman and started trading as Heller Joustra. They reportedly obtained Heller for only 200,000 euros. Heller very slowly fought its way back to profitability by just focusing on doing model kits. But by 2015, it was back in administration again. The reason it found itself in trouble again was cash flow problems due to a decline in sales allegedly related to the November terrorist attacks in France. In March of 2016, the courts approved yet another acquisition of Heller Joustra, or Heller SA, by Maped SA. Maped SA entered into a partnership with entrepreneur Alain Bernard of the New York Finance Innovation of Paris, France, who invested three and a half million euros in Heller Joustra. Almost exactly three years later, Maped announced that Heller was acquired by the German company Glow2B. Glow2B had been the distributor of Joustra and Heller products in Germany. They announced that production would continue in both France and Germany, and that pretty much brings us up to date, or at least that is all that I could find. So how do you feel about Heller kits? The brand is still around, and some of them are still made in France. You have to give them props for that. Viva la France, baby. Au revoir. Écoute la sœur refrain Je me sens si bien Quand je te le dis Mais donne-moi ta main Mais donne-moi ta main Mais donne-moi ta main Et tous les deux Si tu le voulais Il n'y aurait pas de fin Et ce serait Le bonheur parfait Si tu me donnais ta main, oh donne-moi ta main, oh donne-moi ta main. Quand je te vois passer sur la rue, ah ah ah, mon cœur bondit de joie, tu sais, tu le sais, tu le sais, tu le sais. C'est si merveilleux Et je me sens si bien Moi, toute ma vie, je serais heureux Si tu me donnais ta main Oh, donne-moi ta main Oh, donne-moi ta main Quand je te vois passer sur la rue Ah, ah, ah Mon cœur bondit de joie, tu sais, tu le sais, tu le sais, tu le sais. Avec toi, c'est si merveilleux, et je me sens si bien. Moi, toute ma vie, je serais heureux, si tu me donnais ta main.